So I was thinking, I wasn't actually sure what to do for a first post, but I think what I'm going to do is take it a little simpler than the original posting about the kind of crap universal charger for quarter cell batteries, lithium ions, rechargeables. It ended up being horrible, but eh, you can check that out later. What I think we'll take a look at is the actual charge circuit tester, <coughs> or rather, tester for the batteries. It's not a bad unit. Should be okay. It's actually pretty well regarded by anybody who's used the thing, so uh, what it does offer you up is a battery load circuit and a battery voltage check, which you can wire independently of the battery. Made a quick 3D printed case for it just to keep from dropping stuff in it or finger poking the resistors or open leads or uh, whatever, just to keep crap out of the box essentially and make all of the various parts available and leave the heat sink from being covered. And it also lets you see all the LEDs. I'll put this up on Thingiverse if anybody's interested. Yeah, 12 volt even. So apparently 11 to 13 volt means 12 volt. I kind of suspect that it did. I'm guessing if you put it under a heavy load, it dips a little bit. Maybe that's what they're referring to. Who knows? On a side and unrelated note, fair rules are kind of awesome. They actually help you get better surface area on your connections to terminals. For one thing. There's a ferrule right there. It lets you just easily put the ferrule in the connector, like so. Sock it down a little bit. You get a nice even connection. Without having to dick around with any of the loose ends, it won't come apart on you. It doesn't come loose from heat over time, like just loose wires will. Basically, it saves a lot of dicking around and just works better. So, that. Use ferrules. Inexpensive and well worth it. Yeah. Another fun thing to note on these while I'm working on them. Ah, something I found out the hard way. There are a whole lot of different types of pin spacings on these connectors and the connectors themselves are all different sizes depending on which pin spacing they're using. So these are the 2.54s that I've got on here. The uh, SN01BM crimping D sub terminal connector actually works pretty well for this. Uh, better than my 2127, which is kind of crappy because that's a nice commercial connector, but uh, something's probably off on it or is set up for a different application, and I just haven't figured out how to reconfigure it for working correctly with these. Might get it eventually, might not. Might just be that it's built for a different gauge cable that I'm not using, or a different type of cable that I'm not using, and that's that. And there we go. Now we should be able to plug it in. Let's see. Plug it in. Starts at 26. We dial that back. We probably want a 100 milliamp load. Yeah. We'll give it a 100 milliamp load. That's going to be the highest it'll ever see out in the field with our application. That should be good. 0.1 amp, 100 milliamp. There it goes. Yep, it's loading at 0.1 amp, so that's good. I am going to kill the lights. Get my coffee and come back at some point. Hopefully the battery doesn't die on the camera. We'll see. First time I'm using it for this.
So that was quicker than expected. Apparently it is finished. So kill power to it. Let's see what we got. One of the things I forgot to mention was that I was testing the failure mode in this thing, so we were discharging at a much higher than rated amperage. Uh, these only are rated for max 70 milliamp discharge. We were running it at 100, so that probably caused it to fail rather quickly. This was a decent look at the ZU 7B206 Plus version 1.3. If you just turn it on, it goes into a discharge rate. I'll put some links to the actual um, documentation that someone wrote up on how to use it. It's pretty straightforward, really. It measures the voltage and the discharge in real time while you're running through it. Discharges to the heat sink, wasting the power in a regulated manner, and then just monitors it all while it goes on as you can see from the preceding video. So, pretty good test. Be nice if we could get some digital output from it, but maybe some point in the future. Maybe we'll pull a new video and we've got the 2450, which is the other cell to test, the one that should actually have a high enough draw to be useful with this, but I need to charge those up first to make sure they're at full charge before we start. I might do one at full charge, one at nominal charge from sitting. They do seem to hold a charge much better than I anticipated, being about a year old on my bench, and they haven't actually given up yet. So, anyway, until next time.